Hi there folks and welcome back. In this video we're going to combine all of our knowledge about optimization to solve the following example problem. We'd like to find and classify the critical points of this function. The function fxy equals x to the 4 minus 2x squared minus y squared e to the x. Our first step is to find these critical points, right? How do we do that again? Ah yes, the critical points come from the partial derivatives of my function. So I need to compute fx and fy. The partial derivative with respect to x at xy is, well, 4x cubed. Uh, derivative of this term is minus 4x. And the derivative of this term is minus y squared e to the x. Similarly, my partial derivative with respect to y is, well, the first two terms go away, and I'm just left with minus 2y e to the x. We have to ask ourselves, where are these partial derivatives 0, or where do they not exist? Well, take a look at the functions we're working with here, folks. These functions will exist everywhere. We're not dividing by 0, we're not taking the square root of a negative, we're not plugging something negative into a log function, they exist everywhere. So we want to figure out where both fx and fy are equal to 0. Here are our partial derivatives once again. We know that they exist at all points in our function's domain, and so the only way a critical point could arise is if both fx and fy are equal to zero. So we have to solve a system of equations here. We set both of these expressions equal to zero and find all solutions x, y. Now sometimes these equations can look pretty scary, right? But don't worry. Always start with the simpler equation, which in this case I think is fy is equal to zero, Get all the information you can, and then use that information in your more complicated equation. So starting with the equation fy is equal to 0, we see that minus 2y e to the x has to be 0. But hold on a second. e to the x is always positive, right? It's always above the x-axis. So it can never be 0. If this product is equal to 0, it must mean that y is equal to 0. All right, well, let's use that valuable piece of information to solve the first equation. We know that y is 0, right? So if fx is equal to 0, it means that 4x cubed minus 4x is equal to 0. This gross term at the end disappeared. Well, now we can do some factoring. We factor out a 4x. That leaves us with 4x times x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And now factor the x squared minus 1. We have 4x times x minus 1 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now we can see our solutions. x is either 0, 1, or negative 1. And of course, in all cases, y has to be 0. So we have three critical points here. Three critical points. The point minus 1, 0, the point 0, 0, and the point 1, 0. Okay, great. We found our critical points. Now we have to classify them. To do that, we'll use the second derivative test. And of course, we're going to need our second partial derivatives. So I'm going to compute fxx, fyy, and fxy. To get fxx, I'll differentiate this expression with respect to x. That gives me 12x squared minus 4 minus y squared e to the x. To get my second partial derivative with respect to y, I differentiate fy with respect to y. That gives me minus 2 e to the x. Finally, to get my cross partial derivative, fxy, I can either differentiate this term with respect to y or this term with respect to x. In either case, you should get minus 2y e to the x. All right, let's make our table and wrap up this problem. Okay, we have our critical points at the top, our second partial derivatives on the left, as well as this function d. We're looking for the sign of this function in order to classify our critical points. So I'm going to start by plugging in minus 1, 0 to the expressions on the left. When I plug it into this first term, I get 12 times minus 1 squared, that's 12, minus 4, that's 8, and now minus 0 squared e to the x, so I have a value of 8. When I plug it into fyy, I get minus 2 e to the minus 1. I don't think I can simplify that further. And finally, I'm going to plug it into fxy. That gives me minus 2 times 0 times e to the minus 1. That's 0. Okay, time to compute the value of d. At the point minus 1, 0, my function is 8 times minus 2 e to the minus 1 minus 0 squared. 
that gives me minus 16 e to the minus 1. Ah, well, e to the minus 1 is positive, and I'm multiplying by minus 16. That means this quantity is negative. I have a negative value for d. That means my point is a saddle point. Okay, what about at 0, 0? Well, by plugging it into these expressions, I should get uh, 0 minus 4 minus 0. That's minus 4. Uh, minus 2 times e to the 0 is minus 2. And minus 2, 0, e to the 0 is 0. So the value of d here is minus 4 times minus 2. That's 8. Again, minus 0 squared. That's 8. d here is positive. Ah, that means I have a local max or a local min. To figure out which one, I should look at the sign of one of my partial derivatives, fxx or fyy. It doesn't matter which. You can see here that fxx is negative, right? So d is positive, fxx is negative. According to my second derivative test, I have a local max. Local max at 0, 0. Finally, we check the point 1, 0. By plugging it into fxx, I get a value of 8. By plugging into fyy, I get minus 2 e to the 1. And by plugging into fxy, I get 0. Well, again, we compute the value of this d quantity. We get 8 times minus 2 e minus 0 squared. That's minus 16 e. It's negative. If d is negative, it means we have a saddle point. So two saddle points and a local max. Let's check the graph just to make sure. Okay, folks, we found that our function has saddle points at plus or minus 1, 0, and a local maximum at 0, 0. Is that the case in the graph? Oh, it sure is. At 0, 0, we're at this point here, which you can see is a maximum. At 1, 0, we're going to be at this point here. We have a minimum in this direction and a maximum in this direction. We got ourselves a saddle point. Finally, what about the point minus 1, 0? That's this guy back here. Well, sure enough, we have a maximum in this direction and a minimum in this direction. That, my friends, is a saddle point.